All right. So hi, everybody. I'm Linda Brubaker, and this is Lunch and Learn. It's a job seekers group. What we try and do here is support each other in lots of different ways. And we do it on the basis of sharing information, a little bit of networking, but also making sure that we have a topic each week so that we can share ideas, support, and information about how all of this works in the job seeker world. Just so that you have a little bit of information about me, I am a former recruiter, both inside and outside. So yes, I've been called a headhunter. Hated that term, but I have been. And I've been a hiring manager as well as an HR consultant. So I've been in the employment field for my entire career. And for the last six years, I've been a dedicated job search coach. So one of the advantages that I bring to a session like this is information from all sides of that hiring desk. And happy to say that I've that as of yesterday morning, 817 of the people that I've worked with over the last five years, because that's when I started counting, have gotten offers. So I know that some of the information that I'm sharing is useful information. Now with the chat open, what I'd like you all to do is start adding some of your information too. One of the things we want to do, and I mentioned this was a networking kind of a group, is make sure that we are connecting with one another. So please put in your LinkedIn URLs if you are open to those connections. Okay, I'm gonna put mine in the chat as well. And I recommend highly that you include a little note. And for this group, all you have to say is lunch and learn and people will understand where they saw you. But I highly recommend that anytime you're sending a connection request, there be some sort of a message to go with it so people know why they should connect. Okay, so mine is there. I'm also going to add in that chat and I will do this again later, the link to join our private LinkedIn group. I can only connect or invite you if we are first level connections, but you can request that admission at any time. I recommend that you connect with me, but if you don't want to do that or haven't done it yet and you still wanna be part of the group, go ahead and request it and I will check to make sure that you've registered for Lunch and Learn and automatically accept you. Okay, wonderful. All right, we have a, a small group, at least so far. So if you'd like, we can go around the room and let's do a 30 second intro. A little bit about who you are, what you're really looking for and where. And when I say 30 seconds, I really mean it because that's the only way we're gonna be able to do it for everyone. So you can add additional information in the chat. One reason we're doing this today is since our topic is soft skills, I want you to understand that everything you say, everything you do is part of your communication style and the way we interact with you. So as you're doing your introduction, even if your camera is off, your voice is going to be part of that communication style, that energy, that enthusiasm. And it's also the way that you demonstrate that you can succinctly communicate your message. All of that is one of those soft skills. Okay, so we're gonna do that. And I'm going to go around the room just because it's easier for me to do that, make sure that everybody gets uh, a talk. So I'm gonna do Joey, then Cyrus, then Mark, then Sue, then Bo back to me and then I'll do the next group. Okay, hi, uh, my name is Joey Miller. I'm from the Seattle, Washington area. I've been um, uh, unemployed for a little while now and looking to kind of get back into the project management role. Uh, I've been exploring the product management side of things too. And I think that might be kind of a neat challenge to try on something new. So we'll see where it goes. So thank you. Thank you. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Cyrus Davijani. I'm an IT technical support professional focusing on network operating system and database administration. And I'm very interested in improving and developing my skills by working with IT enterprise infrastructure tools and resources like cloud computing, DevOps, DevNet, uh, cybersecurity, and so on. I have more than 10 years of experience and I, I live in Orange County, California and looking for local job opportunity. Thank you. 
Thank you. Good morning. My name is Mark Arbus. I'm from the northwest suburbs of Chicago. Um, and um, I'm a licensed real estate attorney in the state of Illinois looking for a position in real estate, uh, real estate retail, or um, other function of that. Um, and uh, um, look forward to connecting with everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Sue Griffey. I'm a friend of Linda's and I'm here to support her and to support you because Linda and I discovered we dovetail on the topics we like to talk about that we're um, passionate about. I am known as Sue Mentors in the virtual world and I'm the mentor in pom with pom poms. And you may have seen me on other meetings with these pom poms. I bring them in for every little thing that we do so that we get used to acknowledging what we're actually bringing forward. So I'd love to connect. And Linda, thanks for letting me attend these. Always. Thanks for being here, Sue. Well, I think you're next. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. I am Bo Smith. It's good to see a number of you again. I'm an experienced networker and connector, and I take pride in that. And so I enjoy helping you the same way. So let's connect on LinkedIn if we haven't already. I have extensive experience in sales and marketing in the newspaper business, and more recently in sales training and leadership training. And I'm now discerning my next chapter. So that next chapter is going to be helping people with sales or marketing in a business I believe in, or perhaps for a nonprofit in a development role or as an ambassador. So I'd appreciate it if you keep me in mind and I'll definitely do the same for you. I'm Bo Smith. Thank you. Okay. Now we're going to do Mimi, Laura, Cheryl, Tara, and Louisa. Um, hi, Linda. I just jumped in. I just to explain who I am. 30 seconds who you are, what you're looking for, and what location. Sure. I'm Mimi Wunderlich. I am in Montclair, New Jersey. I'm uh, preferably looking for remote or hybrid in, in this area, North Jersey, New York City, possibly, Fl possibly Florida or California. Um, I'm an integrated marketing professional, uh, special, specializing in uh, various areas, digital brand, promotions, events, customer care, uh, lead generation. I've worked in various industries and I'm open to different sectors, B2B or B2C. Um, a great deal of experience in project management, for uh, example, with you know, loyalty programs, online and in-store presence, events and rebranding. Thank you. Hi, I'm Laura Ross. Um, I'm project manager. I've worked in the education publishing industry for about 20 years. Um, I'm interested in finding uh, opportunities in either education publishing or publishing, or I'm open to other industries. Um, the area I'd like to work in is New Jersey, and uh, but I'm open to New York City or the Philadelphia area. Thank you. Good day. My name is Cheryl Sequera, and I'm in Lansing, Michigan. I'm a HR professional specializing in organizational development, talent management, change management. I am open to, I'd like to stay in Michigan. I'm open to remote or hybrid. And um, my, I'd like to go with a larger company. My background has Ford and Pepsi in it. So I'd like to go with a larger fortune, probably fortune 100, fortune 250 company. I think that would be a great fit. Thanks so much. And thanks so much, Linda, for uh, inviting all of us. And Sue, you and I've met before. I don't know if we've spoken before, but I have got that on my list. Thank you. Great. Thank you. I'm sorry, I forgot where we were. All right, if you have not yet spoken. Uh, Tara please, was next. Thank you, I think you're right. Tara, can you unmute and tell us a little bit about you? Good morning, I am Tara Cornforth. Um, I am returning to the working world after um, some time off. Um, I am looking for a position or an alignment position as a business analyst, uh, business operations analyst, or part of a project team. Um, I have heavy uh, background in projects. Um, I am naturally uh, analytical. Um, so that's where I'm 
would like to go with my business analyst. Um, I am in the Northwest uh, suburbs of Chicago. I'm looking for a remote or hybrid position or um, on site if it's um, within a short distance from my home. Um, and that's where I'm at. Very good, thank you. Hi, good morning, everyone. This is Louisa Dixon. And uh, thank you for the opportunity to uh, keep joining this meeting, Linda. Um, I am a, a medical device executive with over 30 years experience. And about 20 years ago, I had the opportunity at my then employer to establish the first ever project program management career track. And that turned out to be my calling. And I have uh, stayed in that field uh, since. Uh, I am in transition and am looking for another opportunity in uh, project program management leadership or perhaps as a chief of staff. I'd like to stay in the medical device industry because that is most likely where I have the best shot of, of landing. And since I am located in the San Francisco Bay Area, I am open to any uh, hybrid or on-site opportunities that are in the Bay Area or uh, remote, uh, since I'm not in a position or not an easy position to, to relocate at this time. And I put my information into the chat. If we've not already connected, and I think I'm, I'm probably already connected to uh, many of you, but if not, uh, please do reach out or I'll find you and uh, perhaps we can have an offline conversation. Thank you so much. Perfect. And by the way, that idea about an offline conversation is a great one. It's a way of not only to find out more about each other, but to share ideas. It's also a way of being able to do some of that offline networking. You never know who knows who. And the more we know about each other, the more we can provide each other with support. So I'm always open to those conversations. In fact, I put a link in the chat about how to get a hold of me to make sure that you get that conversation going. But I think that it's a great way of connecting with one another. And if you are connected, send each other a LinkedIn message or send it in the group chat on LinkedIn and say, hey, I'd be open to a conversation. Do you have some time? Think about this as making a new connection, a new friend. Okay, thank you. And who's, I think we may have gone through the list there. Jennifer, I know you have your hand up. If you have not yet had a chance to introduce yourself, please raise your hand. I don't, I wanna make sure that no one gets missed. <coughs> Okay. Actually, I haven't gone yet. Go right ahead, John. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Uh, John Kornitsky. I'm in the San Francisco South Bay area. I'm a marketing executive with uh, over 25 years of experience. Uh, I started out as an engineer and always got involved in new products and always got, therefore, I always got involved with sales because sales always needed to drag somebody out who knew about the new product, the details of it. And uh, so I eventually uh, moved into marketing full time. And so I, I, I've gotten involved in more than a dozen different market segments in technology. Uh, my, my expertise, or I should say my specialty is uh, product marketing management and strategic business development. Uh, I'm open to you know hybrid and remote, uh, not looking to, to move. Uh, and I'm, I'm willing to help any, anybody learn about technology because I've, I've, I'm so deep in technology and I, I kind of stay there. So it's nice mm -hmm. to meet everyone. And I'm, I apologize to everybody for being silent last week, but I had to leave early. So I thought it best to be silent. Not a problem. Anyhow, uh, looking forward to meeting uh, those, those folks I haven't met yet. Sounds good. Jennifer. Hi, good morning. Thanks, Linda, for everything uh, and all of the support from the group. I am a communications professional. I've got experience in corporate retail and charity um, boards in public relations and marketing, sales, and, um, and anything to do with in-kind donations. And um, it's been a uh, a roller coaster as I'm looking for my next forever job. Thank you. Okay, thank you. In the Northwest suburbs of Chicago. <laughs> thank you, Alan. Uh, hi everyone. Uh, I'm Alan Akiyama. Uh, I'm calling from the uh, the Boston area. Uh, I'm an analytical chemist uh, with about three years of experience um, in the pharmaceutical industry, and um, 
I'm looking for uh, my next opportunity in the same area. Sounds good. Thank you. Tamara. Unmute. There you All go. Right, guys. <laughs> Hi, everyone. My name is Tamara Kelly. I am seeking an opportunity um, within the beauty CPG space. I've been in the beauty industry for 15 years. So my experience um, encompasses traditional marketing, but also digital as well. Um, prior to beauty, um, I've been in pharma um, for six and a half years, but I do want to stay in that um, consumer um that consumer CPG beauty space, but also open to tech as well. I am in the New York City area, so open to hybrid, but prefer remotes. So thanks everyone and nice meeting you all. Wonderful. Thank you all for sharing that information. I think that's really great. So the idea of the raised hands, by the way, I didn't mention that in the beginning. It's another way of making sure that I know that you want to talk, okay? Otherwise just get it out there. This is going to be, a this is not a LinkedIn Live kind of thing where it's only one person talking. This is really an interactive group and that's the way that we learn best from one another. And that's one of the reasons that I'm doing this on a Zoom platform as opposed to LinkedIn because we can do it that way. The idea is to share with one another and learn from each other as we go. So let me see. Um, John mentioned technology. So I'm trying something new. Let me see whether or not it works. Okay. So I have a poll up there. If you have access to it, I want you to think about which skills are most important. And we're going to, we can't talk about all of them. These are all soft skills, but put in the, uh, tell me that the five soft skills that you think are most important and let's see whether or not this poll works and see whether or not we can. All right, I'm starting to see answers. There are 10 soft skills there. The 10 soft skills that are listed in this poll are the ones that employers are telling us are the most important. Tamara, your hand is up. Are you? No, I don't know how to remove it. <laughs> <laughs> I was using the hand raising thing. I'm trying to figure out how to get rid of it. So I didn't the same way that you put it up, it should be in the same spot. Okay, sorry. Okay. I just wanted to make sure that you didn't have another question. Everybody had a chance to take a look. Okay. So it looks to me like the five that are most important are communication, adaptability, problem solving, interpersonal skills. So those four are all pretty close. All right. So let's talk about some of those. So what do you think about some of those soft skills? You know that we see them. Oh, there we go. As I said, I'm learning the technology, but you all should be able to see these results as well. Did it work? Yes. All right. By the way, I should tell you that one additional piece of technology that I'm playing with today LinkedIn, not LinkedIn, Zoom has given us the ability to set up an AI to summarize the conversations that we have. I'm trying that for the very first time today. I will take a look at that summary and then include that in that private group as well. Okay, so you'll notice that most of you said adaptability, communication, interpersonal skills, problem solving, teamwork. Does anything there surprise you in terms of which ones came out and which ones didn't? Uh, 
I don't think there were any surprises, Linda. Um, they all have a have a place in in our in our jobs, and I think the it, I, I picked adaptability as my first one just because it kind of covers the fact that you, you need to be able to flex between all of them and probably a, ho a host of others as well. Um, there's probably never a time when you can always just rely on a single uh, uh, soft skill. I think you need to be able to flex a, a, amongst a fairly broad scope of them. I agree. One of the reasons that I wanted to do this is because since these are the top 10 soft skills employers are looking for. We want to make sure that we have a way of talking about them, sharing how we use those soft skills and how we portray those soft skills throughout our job search. And that means all of our materials. Now, for some of you, if you've already worked with me on a resume, you know that I'm one of those people who says, don't list the term communication or adaptability as one of the skills on your resume. There's a reason for that. There are some job coaches and some resume writers who will put it in there. I don't. The reason that I don't is that I want those skills section of your resume to really focus in on what you bring that's unique to you and to the job. Things like adaptability, communication skills, interpersonal behavior, your leadership style. Those are things that are better demonstrated than just said. So maybe it's time that I talk about the difference between soft skills and hard skills, okay? Anybody help me to figure that out? What's the difference between a soft skill and a hard skill? Uh, would a hard skill be more um, maybe some, knowing some type of application or something to that effect? Uh, than the soft skill, which is more like the communication. Mm -hmm. That's absolutely right. So here's a quick, easy way to determine the difference between a soft skill and a hard skill. A hard skill is what you do, what you know, what you bring in terms of actual activity tasks that you've done. So a hard skill would be things like a software platform that you know, CPG experience, that you mentioned. It could be um, accounting or a specific program. It's the things that you know, the things that you bring in terms of the tasks and the experience that you have. The soft skills are you. Soft skills are part of your personality. It's the way you do those hard skills. Jennifer, you look. Are you getting ready to talk? Uh, sorry, sometimes I notice that your box lights up, and that okay. And I never want to miss anybody. But the difference again is hard skills would be those things, those keywords for the position. Okay, that you can bring in terms of your experience itself. Hard skills you can just mention. You can talk about how they work later, but the soft skills, if you bring them up in the top section of that resume in that skill section, you're gonna be the same as everybody else. Soft skills, you're much better demonstrating, talking about than just saying. If you want to mention a specific soft skill on your resume, include it in your summary section, okay? I'm a detail-oriented person. I'm very creative. I, one of my traits is, okay, you can include it in the summary section or you can include it in your cover letter, but I don't recommend listing it in the skills section. In the skills section, think of it more as I'm doing a Boolean search of all the resumes that came in. What terms am I most likely to focus in on that are gonna help me determine who I want to talk with? If everybody says, analytical, communication, detail-oriented. That's not gonna help me narrow my field. But if they specifically say Six Sigma, or they say um, QuickBooks, or they say Excel pivot tables, 
that tells me more that's related to my job and it's going to narrow my search down. It's not going to tell me that I shouldn't look at your resume, but it is going to tell me who I'm going to look at first. Because remember, I only have normally an average of two to nine seconds for me to skim your resume to decide how much further I want to go. That skill section is where I'm going to look. And I want to make that visual match between what I'm looking for and what you have. And it's easier to do that on the basis of those hard skills than it is the soft skills. So in effect, the hard skills get your foot in the door. They get that idea of here's who I want to talk with. The soft skills and the way you demonstrate them, that's what's going to get you the interview and eventually get you the job. So we have to do that blending of both. Now that said, how do you think we can talk about some of those soft skills? Because you want to be able to demonstrate them in your resume as well as in your interview responses. So if we were to talk, one of the first ones I think that was there was adaptability. Think about how you might be able to talk about adaptability in one of your bullet points of your resume. Or especially if you're talking about it in terms of either your summary section or an accomplishment. Adaptability could be your ability to change mid-screen. It could be the fact that you had to learn a new software platform quickly. Okay. When you were talking adaptability, I think it was Louisa. You said that that was your first one on your list? Uh, yes, I selected adaptability first. Okay. And you said that that was because, if I remember correctly, because it goes into so many of the other areas as well? Yeah. I mean, if you're adaptable to to different situations that, that spring up, um, I felt that it's you know, it helps you be able to flex between other other soft skills that may be necessary to draw on to be able to solve a problem or address the situation. Okay, so if I can ask you, how would you think you would talk about being adaptable in one of the bullets on your resume? So for example, if you were talking about it in, we know how the, that's an easy one for an interview story because bringing up adaptability, you don't have to use the word, but you can demonstrate adaptability in your interview stories and you really should. Is there a way that you can actually talk about it and explain adaptability in one aspect on your resume, Louisa? Uh, I'd have to take a look at my resume. Uh, I uh, don't believe that I use the word in my resume um, at all. Um, but I do speak to having had transformational leadership roles where I did have to be very adaptable and uh, set an example for how to overcome uh, extreme changes that were taking place in the organization and to help others through uh, the, the emotional challenges of those, of those changes that were, that were happening. So yes, to your point, Linda, I, I believe I have some content on my resume that would speak to adaptability, um, but it's it's definitely food for thought and I can revisit my, my PAR stories uh, as well or STAR stories to make sure that I have a solid example or two uh, demonstrating that. That's great. So one of the things with the soft skills is that you don't actually have to use the words. You have to be able to demonstrate it. Recruiters, hiring managers read between the lines. And one of the reasons that we try and incorporate, incorporate so many of the soft skills or demonstrate those soft skills in our stories and in our accomplishments and cover letters is that that's what makes you stand apart. The way you talk, the way you bring it up. So any of you ever remember working with your kids on show and tell, or that, that whole idea of showing and telling, right? So when we were in school and we were talking to the kids about it, you brought in an object and you you talked about it, you shared it and so on. 
So what's more powerful, just bringing in the object or the story that goes with it? The showing or the telling? When we're talking about soft skills, the telling is what's really important. I want to see the demonstration of how you're actually using it. And I can figure out whether that's adaptability or communication style, but I'm much better off understanding your communication style by seeing it in action than I am by you just using the word. Linda, I was yeah. thinking for adaptability, like verbs like transitioned or reassessed, it's, it's a way of talking about how you were adapting to a new situation. Um, and but they have an action with it. Absolutely right. And that whole idea of change management, that's adaptability. Learning a new skill is adaptability. If you're in an interview story and you're talking about a time that you failed and had to pivot, that's adaptability. One of the things that's important is not just how you adapt, but how you help other people adapt as well. So Louisa, I loved your idea of that transformational leadership but I might think about how you phrase that a little bit so that it's talking about not just how you transform or how you help the organization transform, but also how you help individuals transform and change. Yes, uh, definitely a good point. Okay. So let's talk about another of the... Can I ask a quick question on that? Always. So... Um... So perhaps you have change management on your resume, or I helped the company change from system A to system B. Do you need to talk more about it, or should you be highlighting your role in that, or is I changed it? So Sue's nodding her head, so evidently you need to highlight your role in that. Go ahead, Sue. I love this question because a lot of people are confused about your ability and your need to claim what you've actually done, which leads to your evidence and your achievement. So yes, explain your role in that. And um, what I tell people is a way to do that is to frame it in the result that the bigger picture is, whatever the company's moving towards a reorg, introducing a new merger, whatever your role is in that. You talk about the bigger mission of the company you contribute, and you did that by leading X and Y or by uh, delivering the implementation plan um, within a month of uh, the announcement or whatever is the shorter, longer term achievement. So thanks, Linda, for the opportunity to contribute. And uh, Nolan, thank you for, for the contribution, because that's exactly right. So the idea is you're talking about those soft skills by demonstrating those soft skills. And the idea is, if you listen to what Sue's example was, she had leadership, she had achievement and result, she had the accountability, she had the adaptability, she had the problem solving, all in that same example that demonstrates those soft skills we're talking about. And it also gives you the opportunity to build on that for an interview story once you get the interview. Your resume is not the be all end all. The goal of your resume is to intrigue me enough to want to talk to you. It's that conversation that's gonna move you forward and help you get that job. So we need to make sure that with your resumes and with your cover letters, that what you're doing is you are providing that pique my interest. I want to be able to ask, gee, tell me more, not what does this mean or why is it important? So focus in on those and you'll focus in on those soft skills that I really want to hear about. Okay. All right. So if adaptability was number one, then- Actually, communication was. I'm sorry, Bill? Communication was by far. It was like more than 90%. And I, you started talking before you unliked, so I'm sorry. Oh, communication? Yeah, by far. All right. Thank you. So communication we know is important. 
It's one of the reasons that we did the introductions this morning. Whether your mic was, your picture was on or not, you're still communicating you and your style. <coughs> and we do that every time we get together, not necessarily these kinds of 30 second introductions, but anytime you are talking with someone, whether it's in writing or whether it's on the phone, in screen or in person, you are communicating your style and you are communicating who you are. So if you're thinking about that, how do we focus in on some of the soft skills related to communication in some of our written materials as well as our interviews? Just saying communication is one of your skills isn't gonna work, honestly. Okay. Um, I would think that you, um, communicating with stakeholders um, if you're customer facing, you would want to get that out there too. Um, and also uh, how you worked with uh, direct reports or and vendors and things of that sort. Absolutely. So while I wouldn't want you to say communication per se, okay, in terms of one of those skills, but vendor management, vendor relationship management, vendor development, that's a skill that you can absolutely put in there and you can talk about both in terms of a bullet point under a job. You can talk about it in the skills section. You can talk about it in the accomplishments. You can talk about it in an interview story. That's much more specific and related directly to the job than that vague term communication. It's again that idea of demonstrating rather than just saying, okay? The showing rather than just the telling. So absolutely great examples, Laura. Can you think about how you might otherwise demonstrate your communication style or why communication is important or how it's important? Everything you write demonstrates your style. I get that idea about who you are from what you say and how you say it, which is why you need to make sure that not only is everything tailored to the job if you're sending out marketing materials, your resume, your cover letter, your, your follow-up notes, but also that what you're doing is you are making sure that it, it reads well. In fact, one of the things that I recommend with a cover letter or a thank you is read it to yourself out loud. Make sure that it reads well, that it sounds well, in addition to just reading well. That's, again, that communication style. All of those materials count. Other ways that you can demonstrate your communication style and your ability. Can you think of other ways? I have two. Jennifer. Go ahead. Communication, communication is two-way. And in interviews, I... Um, want to actively listen. So you had said something about leaning forward, open posture. And um, I just really want to have the people be aware that I'm listening. So if I'm taking notes as a way to um, learn more, uh, it, it, it just um, listening is so important. Um, I also want to avoid interrupting them, the interviewer when they speak. Um, that and that seems to be a hiccup, <laughs> um, because you all, as coaches, are very good about um, um, being encouraging. Does that help? It does. Thank you. It's also the idea, Jennifer, not just of listening, but responding to something that's been said. One of the problems we often have in terms of our communication style, for example, in interviews, is that we practice our responses so much that we want to answer the questions we've practiced, not necessarily the ones that are asked. More importantly, we're not responding to the cues in that interview to help us focus in on what's important in that particular job or to that particular person. So it's not just the listening, it's the adapting and responding on the fly. Remember that there are very few things that are static. 
your resume isn't even static, right? It changes every time in, adapt, in adapting to the particular job. But your interview responses are conversations. Even if one person is doing most of the asking and you're doing most of the answering, it's still a conversation. And in conversations, there should be a little bit of that give and take, meaning if you listen and adapt on the fly, you're really responding and then you become the person that I remember because you're really speaking to what I need, to what's important to me. And I can tell that you listen and people that listen, Jennifer, you're absolutely right. It makes a big difference. So great tips, thank you. Okay, and then Laura, I think you had your hand raised as well. Yeah, um, just uh, verbs you can use in your resume to kind of say that you're a good communicator is like collaborated or partnered. So they get the idea that you really are willing to work maybe like cross-functionally or something like that. And what kind of what Jennifer was saying about listening and you were saying that if you, when you're writing your thank you note after your interview, if you can pick up something that they said, they'll just be so happy that somebody, oh, they, she was actually listening to what we're talking about in our company. Absolutely right. In fact, as you go through the interview rounds, pick up on information from round one and use some of that information in round two. They're telling you what some of their hot buttons are to begin with if you're listening. So maybe different people but it's still the same company and you know more about what that organization is looking for. So adapt as you go. But you mentioned something really important in terms of those thank yous after the conversation. I'm one of those people who highly recommends that you try to connect with the person you're going to be interviewing with before the interview. Send them a connection request saying, I'm looking forward to our conversation on such and such a day. Doesn't need to be anything more than that. What that does is it's part of your communication style, part of the research that you're doing. You're going ahead and you are paying attention to details by reading their profile, trying to find out what's important to them. If you send that connection request, some will accept it, some won't. But then I also recommend if they do send that or accept that request, that you message them after the conversation. Not just sending the email, thank you, that's important. But as I learn new tricks myself, if you are a first level connection, and it may be, if you have a premium account, I think you can do it to anyone, but I don't. You can send a voice message through LinkedIn. They're short. I think they're about 30 seconds. No more than a minute. But it's a very quick way of them, again, hearing that energy and enthusiasm. And one quick thank you that complements the thank you note that you've sent. Now, I will be honest. I just figured out how to do that a couple of days ago. Okay. And you do it, you have to have the mobile app in order to do it. But you go into the message screen, okay, you're sending a message to someone, and there should be a microphone that pops up on the right hand bottom side of the screen. It will then give you a button that you can push and hold down while you're recording. And it's a quick and easy way to do it. And your voice as that thank you generates that energy and enthusiasm and reinforces your communication style in a way that the written thank you can't. So it's another way of adding that communication piece. In addition, what that does is it demonstrates that you are adaptable to new technologies, that you're learning new things, okay? And it makes you that memorable person in my head. Yes, Cheryl. So, Linda, I, as nature professional and as a person that's been on many a call in my life, I, I hate the person who disagrees with the presenter because. No, I don't. 
if you if you don't like like the presenter saying or don't agree then move on to something else but (laughs) bring it on my hand and ask this so as an HR professional and maybe I'm thinking 10 years ago you know back in the day I used to not give the cover letter to the hiring manager. I would only give them the resume. The uh, you want everybody to be graded on a solid on on the same platform on on solid ground, I guess, if you will. That's why you have the same people in the interview panel so that everybody's interviewed the same. This just feels a little too. Um, uh, I don't know if really aggressive is the right word, but it just feels like it's too much because hiring managers are already overwhelmed. So if you're if you're sending them a thank you and then sending them a LinkedIn message and sending something else, how what has been your response to receiving that much feedback? So honestly, Cheryl, it's a great question. And by the way, always disagree with me. This is an open forum. Okay. The idea is we're all learning from each other and all growing together. And there are lots of different ways of doing things. So I'm not one of those person who believes there is only one right way to do some of this. So I'm giving you suggestions and things that I know there are other things of doing it. So please always chime in. So what we are finding though, Cheryl, in terms of the research is two things. The reason that I'm a big cover letter fan is that Even if I don't read it, I know that it's there. And I know that what it tells me is that the person cared enough to try and make it this job rather than just any job. They took that extra time. I also know that at least for every ATS that I've ever used, now granted, an ATS, and I'll say it over and over again, an ACS is not going to screen you out. But an ATS can, if I'm putting in keywords, it can help me sort which resumes I want to see first. Is that your experience as well, Cheryl? Yeah, I mean, and again, I'm talking, I'm talking the early to mid 2000s of when I was doing these types of things. Okay, so what I liked about the ATS in terms of sorting information is that it will read the information both on your resume and your cover letter. Mm. So if you're adding some of those terms, like one of my strengths is my ability to communicate, then communication, if I'm putting that in there, is going to pop up. And every ATS that I've used, it's almost as if it's got a yellow highlighter. So when I'm looking at that information, those terms that I've added into the system and saying, here are my hot buttons, Again, not a screen out, but it's a way of sorting for me which ones I'm going to look at first. Those words highlighted in yellow on my screen, whether it's resume or cover letter. More importantly, if you're writing a good cover letter, and most people now will share everything that is presented, not just individuals. And if you're concerned about it, make your cover letter a page of your resume. But a lot of companies are saying, submit a resume and a cover letter. That will be forwarded and it will be read. Now, I can't guarantee everybody's going to read it. Okay. But I will tell you that for a number of us, and I guarantee that I'm one of them, a cover letter makes a difference sometimes if I'm on the fence about whether or not I want to speak with someone, the cover letter pushes me one way or another. Because a good cover letter is the pre-answer to why you, why do you want this job in this company? Not just why do you want any job? So there's that. In terms of the thank you notes, thank you notes are a difficult thing. You know you need to do one within 24 to 48 hours why email works. Unfortunately, you're not always going to have the email address of anyone other than the person who set up the appointment. You don't know whether or not that's going to be forwarded on. We hope that they will, but there's no guarantee. 
If you can send a voice message on LinkedIn or even a thank you message on LinkedIn, that doesn't go to anybody else other than the person to whom you're sending it. One of the things that our research has been telling us is that those LinkedIn messages after the conversation absolutely helps, okay? And we are finding in addition as people start to use the, those voice messages, so few people are using them, you immediately stand out. And remember, you're showcasing not just the words, you're showcasing you in a voice message. So I'm gonna start recommending that you do those. You can't always, but it's it's like leaving a, a telephone message, right? It's short, it's sweet, it's to the point, and it's very easy to do. Now that I figured it out, I can say that it's very easy to do. Monica, okay. Can you tell me more about what your question is about asking whether or not it can all be in one message? Oh, so um, related to the, uh, we should LinkedIn message and send a thank you note, right? Like, can that be all one message? I would say we can combine that so we're not bombarding the hiring manager or the talent acquisition team. Is that correct? So actually I would do it as two. Okay. And here's the reason why. The message that you're giving, your verbal message, okay, is 60 seconds, no more than 60 seconds. And what your main idea there is, it's that energy, that enthusiasm, you can say one or two things and you're done. In your email, thank you, that's something I can refer back to if I need to. But it's also your way of addressing, let's say that there was a point that, that was brought up in the conversation that you wanted to reinforce, or you didn't say you did it as well, or this was their hot button and you want to say it again. It's another way of doing that. So it's an added message. And since we don't know whether those thank yous actually will go to the hiring manager, it's just another way of making sure that it gets there. No guarantees anybody's going to to get them, okay? The hiring manager may not connect or the person you've been interviewing with may not connect on LinkedIn to even get that message. But it is another way of trying to make yourself differentiated from other people and demonstrate that you can communicate in lots of different ways. So I would do it separately. Thank you. Absolutely. And I, for me, I just, I find doing the cover letters helpful just for me for understanding the fit, what, what makes this job fit me. And then if I go to the HR uh, screening, a lot of times that's, uh, it almost has all the information I actually need, you know, to get in there, uh, to get through that. So I find if, you know, even if no one ever sees it, at least I have it and if a month later I have to look at this job and say, why the heck did I apply to it? I have reason. So I find them good for myself. I think they're great. And I think that's a great point, Laura, because it's your way of figuring out not only what their hot buttons are, but yours for that particular job, how you fit and why you want that particular job. So as I said, it is that pre-answer in effect to why you, why this company, why this job. It's not just a repeat of what's in your resume. If that's the case, it's useless, my mind. And it can't be a generic. It's showing that you've really done your research. You're trying to make me understand why this is important to you. And more importantly, why you're important to me. So it really works. Nowadays, I'm finding, though, you don't even uh, necessarily have to do a cover letter because instead they, they're asking questions on a lot of these applications now. They're asking like multiple questions sometimes. That's really the same type of thing. It's just getting the answers a different way. Yes, but 
So the questions really are knockouts in many ways. They're not what? They are knockouts. Okay. Yes, they're going to be doing it. So people are concerned, for example, Mimi, that um, the ATS is going to knock you out. It won't. But some of those questions you get asked might. Do you have X number of years of this? If you don't, then it's a, a no go. No, no, no. I, I agree. I agree on those. I was speaking more to like the ones like, why do you want this job? Like the ones where you're going to have to write something like much more, not the yes or no type of things. In that case, yes. But if that's the case and you're getting those that would still give you those answers, you can do that instead. If not, I truly highly recommend a cover letter. And if the application doesn't allow it, then I truly recommend adding a cover letter as one of the pages of your resume for that opening only. Okay. Now I haven't seen some of the detailed, why do you want these, um, this job as an example, coming up that often, Mimi, it may be being used more often uh, as time moves on. Have you seen it a lot? A couple of times I've had, I've had them. Okay. Yeah, it's sort of like in the ATS, there's uh, like interview questions in the ATS, which is sort of like, you're like, oh, great. <laughs> I just took an hour filling this out. Now I have to answer an interview question, but it, sometimes they're even like fill in the blank. Fill in the blank? Can you give me an example, Laura? Yeah, I'm they have like, just like you would add skills to the ATS, um, they have possible answers ah. to those questions. Uh, so it's not like you're writing it out from scratch, which is odd to me, but that's what they have in there. So if that's the case, if that's what that interview question is, that is often, unfortunately, something that may be used as a sorting mechanism and maybe even as a screen in, screen out question before I even take a real look at your resume. And that's a terrible thing in my mind. Okay, but that's a different story. I will do some additional looking at those, Laura and Mimi, and see where I can't get some more information about how, how many of those are used. Have you seen those two, Cheryl? I haven't seen them, but I wonder if they're related to either industry or profession. You know, I'm in HR, so when I interview with other HR people, it's a different bird, but maybe it's more... Um, more appropriate in possibly IT or marketing. I'm just guessing. So a lot yeah, of it's like, oh, I'm sorry. It's just like questions like, "What is your work style? What gets you up and uh, out of bed in the morning?" Very generic interview questions. Which really, I, I agree meeting. with Linda. I think that's kind of, I think that's kind of cheating. If you're going to ask that question, you should ask them in person, because we can all write anything and. That's also a pre get to know you question. When you have your interview, you have a few questions that are, you know, tell me about yourself, what's your work style, those get to know you questions. So if you're asking that in, in a ATS system or in a generic way, I, I agree with Linda, that just feels kind of strange to me. Yeah, it's not something that I like. Now, unfortunately, we know that AI is coming more into play. And so in some cases, I do know that some of those questionnaires may be looked at it as an AI trying to screen through some of that, or that there are some um, standard answers that they may be looking for. But I agree. I think that's that's not something I like, um, nor something I would ever encourage any of my hiring managers to use. I have seen and have encouraged hiring managers perhaps to use a screen in, screen out question. Do you have X number of years in this? Have you got experience in this particular thing? So I have seen that happen. Okay, we are running at an hour. Okay, I don't wanna keep you all too long. I can keep going for a little while longer if you want to, but I do wanna make sure that everybody has added their information into the chat, okay? I'm going to add again, once I can copy it, okay? The, that's the link to our private group session or group chat on LinkedIn, where I will be posting some of these videos. And by the way, when I post, and I, I apologize, I'm not going to do it right away, um, but I will try and let you all know when it's up there. I do want to get your feedback on that AI summary. 
just because it's the first time I've used that tool. And I want to see whether or not you all think it's accurate, whether you get anything from it. Okay. So we've got that. I'm also going to include the link so that you can connect with me if you have it. And if you would, as we talked earlier, getting to know each other is a good thing. If we haven't spoken and you'd like to have a quick conversation, you can do that too. Okay. All right. So we didn't get through a lot of the soft skills, but we made a start. We will do this again and talking about some of those other soft skills in terms of how we can add those in. So one of the other links that I'm going to give you is what's called a Jamboard. A Jamboard is an online brainstorming tool. Once I give you this link, you now have access to it at any time. Just keep the link. We're up to 20 pages, which is the maximum. But if you find a topic that you want to make sure that we talk about at one of these Lunch and Learn sessions, if it's already on the list, duplicate it so that I know that somebody else wants it. it I count the number of cards that are there. If there's a new topic that isn't there, add that too. It always gives me something new to think about. And I'm also going to be asking in the feedback, in the Lunch and Learn chat, Tell me about the formatting of this. I'm trying to play with it as we go along. I want to know what works for you and what doesn't. Okay, and we will go there afterwards. Sue mentioned to make sure that everybody saves the chat. Do you all know how to do that? So if you go to the bottom of the chat screen, okay, you'll see, um, let's see, there's three dots at the very bottom. If you click on that, one of those will say save chat. I'm also going to copy the chat and put it into that lunch and learn group on LinkedIn. Okay. Now, one of the things you should know though, is that depending upon how you save it and when I put it into the, the group, the links will not be active. So you're gonna have to copy and paste them into your browser as opposed to just clicking. Okay, excellent. Anything else I can do for anybody today? Any last questions about some of the soft skills that we've spoken about? And I know we got a little off track and I don't care, but if you do, let me know. Could you paste the, the 10 uh, soft skills into the chat? I will do that. Thank you. Okay, and if I can't do it quickly, I will do it into the... Let me see if I can, hmm. I can do it for you real quick. Perfect. I was gonna say I have to pull them back up again. Oh, did you put that up? I just did. Oh, perfect. Okay, I won't do it then. Okay, but I don't know that I can copy that into the chat. I'm doing it. Perfect. So since I haven't seen how this looks on your end, as I said, this is my first time doing this. Can you see all of the results or do I have to screen, uh, to scroll? Depends on how big your window is. You may have to um, scroll it down. Okay. But I can also, in the private chat, I will list the what those topics are. That's what I'm doing for you. Perfect. Thank you. Sure. I appreciate that. Do I need to scroll for you? No, nope, I it should be uh it should be in there now. Excellent. Okay. I'm going to stop the recording.